Welcome to Norris Dam State Park. The roads here are so narrow, especially for our two vehicles to go through. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've made it to the East Campground. Watch out for kids. Gift sites 10 and 14. It's the one here just before this trailer on the left and the one right after the trailer on the left. Alrighty. I've got to unhook my truck. Wow, they're really cramped up in here, aren't they? Okay, I'm right here to the left. Uh, I'm gonna pull over you here. You probably want to stop and disconnect. Yeah. Let me unhook my truck real quick. Hope I'm not blocking anybody. I'm sure they can get by. Oh, what a crowded place, but it's beautiful. Okay, all set. We are here at camp. This will be camp for the next three nights. Hey, Mama, are you ready to come outside? Hmm? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's plug into electric. Whoops. A little spider. It's a jumping spider. Ah! <laughs> Think it was more scared than I was. Okay. Should be good. Have to hook up my water. I'll do that in a little bit. Kellogg! <laughs> Just right over there. There's uh, one space between us. Momo is chillaxing in the grass. And I did get my onboard water tank filled up. And now it's connected to the city port. We are in a touristy area near Knoxville. Most of the campsites were $70 plus or more. Um, but this was only $35 a night. And Jeff got his uh, senior discount, right? Yep, 25% off. 25% off, wow, nice. Well, the sun's getting ready to set and we wanna take the dogs for a walk and also check what is going on in the campground. So we're gonna see where the dump station and stuff is. Oh yeah, I should shut my door, shouldn't I? So they do have a lot of sites here, about 25, and this is the smaller of the two. And the larger one, do you know how many? I think they have about 50. 50 in the larger one? And then there's some primitive campsites out here, no hookups. For like tent camping and stuff? Yeah, they're, it's a very narrow, bumpy road, so. Okay. I passed the tent, there's the primitive sector. Here's the road that leads to the primitive camping. It just leads down that way. There's another road also that goes along the power lines. I see somebody set up over there. Dump station, here's the dump station. This is kind of awkward placement for here. It's right next to this camp spot, huh? Anyways, do not drink this water, non-potable water. Kellogg had to mark it, of course. That's boy dogs for you. There are the restrooms there. They do have showers. 
the other campground from what I've read is the newer of the two campgrounds and it's near the visitor center mm -hmm. but it's at the end of a very narrow winding road oh. on the other side of the dam even though the road here was kind of narrow and windy yes it was that one's supposed to be worse oh and here is the trash oh yeah these sites are supposed to be a little bigger on this side than in the new campground the new campground can't fit rigs over 30 feet oh, okay here's an overview of the loop of campsites and like I pointed out they do have a dumpster here but this is a one-way road this part here but some that we took was not one way and we were trying to get by trucks and stuff but this is and you have to go out this way this is the exit wow I'm not sure but maybe that's the camp host's house a ranger. ranger that's nice remember we are in hill country so there's a lot of valleys dips and hills no, nothing is level. Oh, well, my site's pretty level. The campsites were marked as slight incline, but I would call it almost level. You don't really need any leveling. Like I had mentioned before, it is a very heavy wooded area, but beautiful. As you can see here, there are quite a few cabins in the woods. I remember looking at the cost, they weren't that expensive. And they are rentals. Just said they weren't that expensive. Cheaper than some hotel rooms. He looked online and he said he thinks they start about $85 and go up from there. We're at the campground, which is here. Yeah. And we're walking down the road. These are all the cabins, these little black dots. Okay. Then there's the east campground. All right. Wait, here. is that where, that's, that's that where was, we are? That's where we are. There's the dam. Yeah. We turned off the road here before the dam. So this is Norris Dam, the same name as the campground, but it's the Clinch River. River. But Norris Lake. Oh, Norris Lake. Yeah, which goes up. Wow. The other, yeah. see, that... the other campground's way over here. Okay. And you just way up through these winding Yeah, lines. so the there's West. Center. Oh, so West Campground is way away because yeah. we're down here. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then canteen, yeah, recreation area. Center. We passed all this coming up. No, no, we came in this way. Oh, we did come we in never, that way? We never oh, went we across did. the dam. We didn't cross the dam. Yeah. So we I showed this line, at yeah. the beginning of the video, but yeah, we never went over. Okay, maybe tomorrow we can do some exploring yeah. in the different areas and show them the West Campground. Yeah, I think they have uh, like boat rentals and things at the marina, but it's a huge lake. Huh. Miles and miles and miles of shoreline. So the one good thing about the cabins is you're not right next to your neighbor here. And it doesn't really look like a lot of them are rented out. Any of them, well, there is one car down there. So one cabin. They have fireplaces. There's a nice screened in porch, but doesn't look like they are dog friendly and there's no smoking. Oh yeah, if you look at that cabin right there, you can see the chimney. Now I'm not sure if all of them are not pet friendly, maybe just specific ones. I guess you can always call if you ever wanted to rent one. I'm sure you'd have to go online anyways. Ah, uh, the smell of a nice campfire. Like heaven back there had one going. Actually, I guess there are more people because we weren't aware that the cabins came back so far. I just heard an owl. Wow, look how deep that valley is right there. There it goes, I don't know if y'all can hear it. I think they rent out these back cabins first because most of these are full. Oh, they've got a nice campfire going there as well. I'm not sure if you can see it, but through the trees there is the lake. Yep. Oh, everybody has a campfire going, I'm jealous. So that's the last cabin. This is a dead end road. There's a lake. Oh, this cabin has a nice view of the lake, although there are a lot of trees. So it's kind of hard to see the lake. Wow. It's a massive lake. It's a long lake. This is just one finger. Didn't you say there was like how many miles? Several hundred miles. Seven, several hundred miles of shoreline. Oh, they do have a playground, although it is caution taped off. Huh. They do have these trash cans here, the bear proof trash cans. I do like the spacing of the cabins because you're not right next to your neighbor. There are a lot more cabins than I thought. Puppy puppies. 
So they have about 20 cabins here and we were just discussing it. We think these are the best cabins that we've seen yet and we've seen quite a few places with cabins. If y'all know of any really good cabins, put them in the comment down below. So Jason said a lot of these dams were, were built, they're part of the TVA and were built for power during the Manhattan Project to have power for the uh, uh, Oak Ridge Laboratories which is just down the roadways. So if you don't know, that's where they did a lot of the research for the atomic bombs. Yeah, there were the three main laboratories or research areas that I know of. This was one of them, Oak Ridge. And then there was the one near Alamogordo, New Mexico, which was where they eventually exploded the, t the first bomb. And then there was the uh, facilities up in Hanford, Washington, where they made the plutonium. Oh, they do have an amphitheater down there. They have three trails here, Christmas Fern Trail, and that's 80 yards away, Lakeside Loop Trail, which is 325 yards away, and the Tall Timber Trailhead, which is one and a half miles away. But they don't tell you actually how long the trails are. No bicycles or swimming, but they do have a nice day use parking lot for it. Okay, so Jeff okay. was just pointing out that the trails don't look that long, about a half mile or so. But they're like 45 degree angles down to the Yeah, lake. that's a thing. You have to make it down to the lake right here, and that's very steep through there. And then back up. Right by the trailhead is this big, large building. It's a meeting area, and it is the tea room. Oh yeah, they have lots of tables and chairs in there for gatherings. Balcony on the back. Oh, there is a balcony on the back? Oh yeah, I see it. They have another playground here. This one's not roped off. It looks like there's another playground. At the beginning, there was, I remember that when we first came in, and a huge outdoor pavilion with a fireplace. We're almost gonna lose the sun. This is day use area, and when we first came in, it was completely packed. I'm not sure what they were having. Yeah, but now it is empty. Oh, this is nice. They do have lights and ceiling fans, I guess, if you want to do something at night. And there's the fire pit or fireplace that I spoke of earlier. And they do have two grills here and lots of picnic tables. Oh, and a water fountain at the end. So oh, that house we saw earlier is the ranger's residence. And this is the road that leads up to it. Goodbye, son. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day today outside, and we're going to go do some exploring, but first... Boiling up some pasta for lunch. I had some leftover Philly cheesesteak, so I'm going to make a Philly cheesesteak pasta. I've got the onions and peppers cut up already. Now that we're here at the campsite for three days, I finally got a chance to pull my slide out. I haven't had it out for over a month and I just really haven't felt like putting it out. And I wanted to see how it is living and it's just like being in a regular Class C without a slide. There's plenty of room. But anyways, this gives me a lot more room and I wanted to clean and that's what I got done today. So I'm glad to have my living room cleaned. And I've got to clean my bedroom now, but I want to fix a little lunch first. Sauteing up the veggies. I'm going to just add the meat in. I buy this organic mac and cheese from Fry's, and it comes with the cheese packet. It's not the powdered cheese packet. It actually has the squeezed cheese. I'm going to stir that together. At the end, add some sour cream, and it's good to go. I've got the garlic bread going. I cook it for about eight minutes at 400. I think I've mentioned before how I make my garlic bread. So it's sourdough, and then I put sour cream on top, then garlic powder, and then sharp cheddar, and then I bake it. It's easy peasy. All right, I just added in the sour cream. Stir this about, and this is done. Ooh, so creamy. I skipped breakfast. Well, I had a banana. That, that was it in my lemon water. I'm pretty hungry. Mama, you ready for some lunch? There's your treat. I called Jeff, so he should be on his way over. Lunch is served. Oh, well, lunch was yummy. 
and I got a nice long shower in this morning. Probably gonna take one or maybe two more before I leave. Right, Memo, you need one too. I'll give you one later. You know what they say, enjoy it while you can. Definitely a beautiful day to go check out the lake. Since we are passing by, we thought to stop by Norris Dam. They do have houseboat rentals across the lake there. I can see the houseboats. That's pretty cool. Thought I'd come over and take a closer look at Norris Dam Marina up here on the top ridge. Not sure if this was quarried or not. Kinda doesn't look very natural. Oh, look. So the lake is extended out to here. I wonder if this fills up from time to time. It looks like it. There's a houseboat right there, but I think the houseboats that they actually rent are the larger ones way over there. Looks like a quiet day here at the marina. Also get a better shot of the dam from this side. Wow, the lake is pretty long. Look, it goes way over to the left there. I was just noticing they have a little booth at the entrance and I think there is a fee, if I'm not mistaken. It gets a $10 to launch your boat here. Here comes Jeff and the puppies. Memo, come on. Come, come on, come on, come on. Run. <laughs> Yay, you made it. <laughs> It's hot today, isn't it? Actually, I would say it's warm, not hot. There's a nice cool breeze blowing too. Oh, they have this nice stone walkway that leads down to the marina. I love stone walkways. Bottom of the stairs is the bathrooms. Red buds looking beautiful. Wow, that water is very greenish blue. It's pretty. Kind of looks dyed a little bit. Oh wow, electric shock hazard. No swimming within 100 yards of boat dock. I just looked it up. It's a beautiful 75 degrees today. They do have watercraft rentals here. That reminds me of when Terry and Scott rented that jet ski that was fun in Wyoming or I think was that Idaho I'm not sure yeah this just leads to the other set of docks oh I like those bikes right there the paddle bikes I've never actually seen water bikes it has two pontoons on each side Okay, yeah, they do have launch fees. In season, Memorial Day through Labor Day, 20 bucks. Out of season, $10. North Dam State Park, overnight guest launch free with proof of receipt. Houseboats, $100 all year. Wow. So I think that $10 is for people who are actually camping where we are or the other campground or staying in the cabins. Caution, steep grades, dangerous curves. Well, they weren't kidding. It is definitely steep and windy going downhill. We've come to check out the other campground. It should be right up here somewhere. I just saw the sign. They have the Hoot and Holler sinkhole around here somewhere. Definitely very steep and windy. Steep and windy, Kellogg. We made it to the beginning of the campground. They do have these animal proof trash cans. The cantina, this is closed. Huh, I wonder what that is. Anyways, the dump station is right across the street there. That one's actually better than where we're at. It's, it's by itself where the other one was integrated into the camping area and it's just in an awkward place. They do have a large dumpster here and I believe that road there leads to the ranger's home. We made it to the West Campground. Watch out for kids. It is one way. I thought that was a grain silo, but Jeff thinks it's water and he's probably right. That is pretty large. Most of them are much shorter. 
yeah, they do have much shorter sights here. Well, except for the inner ones, those are a bit longer because it's a travel trailer and stuff. The ones on the outer perimeter are definitely shorter. They are wider though. Okay, so we've made it to the end of this side here and there's 26, 27 campgrounds or campsites. Okay, we made it to the end of this side and there was 27 campsites. It's nice and shaded. I don't think our side has this many trees. No, they said if you want solo, you want to Although, look at the campsites, or, or the picnic tables in the um, fire pit. They're kind of down low. That's awkward. Not level at all. Well, I like that pop-up camper right there. Apache, or I think that's what it said, Apache. So, so far, I think there are, let's see, 50 sites. And this is it. Yeah, the camp host is at number 50. Well, that was the West Side Campground. Oh, cool, they have one of those marker signs there. Frozen Head, that's weird, 24 miles. Me Man Shelby, 338 miles. Fort London is 45. Huh, Rocky Island, 91 miles. This is the visitor center. This is where the park office and laundry facilities are. So Norris Dam, the Marina Museum are to the left and Rocky Top is to the right. Also 75 is as well. And that's where we'll be going to grab some gas. Oh, dogwood in bloom. So we made it to Rocky Top to grab some gas because we're below a quarter. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Oh, Rocky Top Inn. Rocky Top Liquors. So gas there was 307 and diesel was 367. Now Rocky Top is only 20 miles from downtown Knoxville, so not too far. And there's not much open on Sunday, so we didn't drive through town. But um, it is known for being the access to where we're camping, Lake Norris and the dam. Oh, look at that hotel, wow. That looked run down. We came to the Overlook so we can get a better view of the lake and the dam. Wow, this is a awesome view here. Nice. So we are camping up there on top of that hill. And this is the route we came in on. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at the valley down there. That's where we want to go to. It's a hiking trail right by the water. Free dog. <laughs> Just a dog roaming free here. I don't see any leash signs. And there were a couple people. They were just walking their dog without a leash. So I don't know if there's a leash law here. Okay, let's go for a stroll by this beautiful spot. Which way do you want to go first? I believe the trail is a big loop. There's two sides to it. Wow, what a beautiful place. So there's a sign about dangerous waters. Oh, there's actually a third trail. Okay, this continues on. So it says, waters will rise rapidly when siren sounds or light flashes. Proceed immediately to safety. Okay, go. How pretty is this? Looks like, not sure. Yeah, wild roses all along here. So after the dam, this becomes the Clinch River. It's a pretty wide river. The trail that we were on meets back up with the main trail. Then there's an intersection. I think this is another trail that leads off that way. And then there's a bridge. I think this trail continues on. What is that? Oh, 
So where are we at? Around here? Yeah, so, oh. Trail split. oh, okay, down here, and there's the Norris Dam up here. So what does it say? Elevation what? 1,026 feet. The board says that this is Norris Songbird Trail. And there's supposed to be an island coming up here. Nice little stream there. And there's one of the museums across the street. I think they have two or three here. They have a boat launch here, but... Oh, it's probably for, in, in case they have to put an um, emergency boat in. Oh, emergency boat. I was going to say, because it's locked, so you can't actually... So maybe, it's, like Jeff said, it's not for public use. I thought the trail continued on, but it doesn't look like much of a trail. It definitely gets narrow. And there's some kind of facility over there, so I'm not actually sure if you can get through there. There's a little overlook here. I just wanted to show y'all. There's the island right there where the river splits. Yeah, it doesn't look like the trail continues on because it's a very steep embankment there. Okay, I don't know why I didn't notice this before, but here's the loop. It's in the red. They don't even show that little small, well, maybe they do, that little they small trail. Yeah. Come down a mile. Okay, so we're gonna take the inland a little bit, come back around, then back to the truck. So here's all the birds that they have here. Eastern Bluebird, Tuft Titmouse, uh, Pelated Woodpecker, the Eastern Tohe, Carolina Chickadee, Song Sparrow, Cedar, Waxwing, Carolina Wren, Common Yellowthroat, Great Crested Flycatcher, Eastern Kingbird, Indigo Blunt, then they have the Dark-Eyed Junco, White-Throated Sparrow, Yellow-Bellied Sapsucker, <laughs> that's such a funny name, and Ruby-Crowned Kinglet. We were gonna take the trail over there, but it's right by the highway. I think we would enjoy the walk, the upper trail by the river. And then we'll just do the loop a little bit and it'll bring us back around to the truck. Oh, look at the little stream. Leads right into the river. Emma. So I found another clearing here. It's a beautiful day. What a lovely path. I was gonna say, look at all these trees, but they look planted because they're in rows. That's two straight of rows, not natural. Wind blowing like the water's going to the right, but it's to yeah, but if, I don't know if y'all can see that. The water's pretty clear. There is a lot of like vegetation under the water. I don't know if it's algae or whatever, but it's all along the bottom. There's just a few par patches that are not covered in the green. Probably why the water's so clear. Oh, pretty cool. They have a wild patch of bamboo growing here. Yeah, that's what it is. Wow, look at that one back there. It's pretty big. Oh, some of them are in the back. Well, that's weird. They have this old cement pillar just there. Oh, has a water gauge, I think, on the side. I guess this is when this area is flooded out. We we're waiting on Kellogg. <laughs> He's trying to say hello to his squirrel friend. Some more trees that have been planted in rows. Then over here, they're in rows, but it's the cluster of trees. The roads are zigzaggy, the trails are zigzaggy. Look at, they have an old zip line here. Well, I don't know if it's a zip line, but something to get across the river. There's a cable that goes all the way across. Huh. Then there's a platform right there. So that looks like it would be fun. Yeah, the other side of the river is very steep though. So there's stairs that lead it down. Go ahead, Mimika. Go, Kellogg. Oh, what a pretty lower area. Look, it's nice and clear by the river. Oh, now you can probably see. Yeah, I think it's some kind of algae growing at the bottom. 
whatever it is, it's making the water clear. There's a lower trail, like earlier. So we'll just follow this, see where it leads to. Okay, there is a trail over there. I thought it was so steep that there wasn't a trail, but I can clearly see someone walking over there. Huh. Nice to know. So I think the map was a bit misleading. It said that the trail was, the whole loop was two miles, but it feels like we've already walked two miles in one direction. We come to another clearing and there's the dam right there. And we drove probably the, our parking areas, I know at least two miles. And I do believe this path goes all the way up to the dam, the welcome center there or visitor center. So we're gonna get back on the trail and head back. See the bright light shine. Nice, someone's singing in the park. We made it back to the second loop that goes around the backside. What was it? Get a good view of the dam. Yeah, that is a great view of the dam over there. And then the first parking lot. Okay, we're gonna make our way back to the truck. Actually, I thought this trail wasn't gonna be as pleasant because it's right by the road, but it's not bad. Beautiful views and the dogwood is in bloom there. Here's that planted area. It's beautiful through here. I'm not sure what that flowering tree is up there. Kinda looks like a cherry, but that's huge. Yeah. Oh, there's another one here. Look at these. I don't know if you can actually see that. Actually, it kind of reminds me of an uh, apple tree. So that's what the blooms look like on the our apple tree back home. Huh. Well, we're almost back to the parking lot. It's right around the bend. Well, there's not really a bend. Yay, we made it back. That was absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed that walk, other than the sign being a little misleading but every mile was worth it. Can we go inside? Good girl. You okay there, Mr. Crazy? Chasing the squirrels and you a little hot and worn out? <laughs> no, no, I don't want no kisses. You keep your squirrely breath to yourself. Decided to get some dinner from Firehouse Subs. I got the meatball sub. And Jeff got the hook and ladder sub. It's just uh, deli meat, I believe. Mm. Yeah, and uh, these were only sixteen dollars for the, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah for the whole thing, because normally the sandwiches by themselves are nine something a piece. Right, but um, he had a coupon in, on his app. So today is checkout day. Got everything packed up. Just need to unhook the water and the electric. Jeff went ahead and moved his rig to the front. He's gonna drive the truck to the front and I'll meet him there. I still have to dump as well. We'll be able to roll out of here. That's the one thing about being plugged in. It's wonderful, just wonderful. Being able to take a lot of showers. Dump station. It's right by the road. I feel like I'm blocking the road, but got a dump, so.
Jeff had the truck. He stopped by the dumpster and put the trash in. It is now a quarter till noon. Checkout was at noon, so we're doing good. There's parking up front at the Welcome Center for the dam. That's where I'm gonna hook up the truck. It's definitely a overcast, gloomy day. We do have a storm system coming. I just talked to Terry last night. I wasn't aware that it was gonna be as bad, but I think all we're supposed to be getting is rain, and they're supposed to get some tornadoes in northern Tennessee and towards Oklahoma. We were gonna go ahead and go to our friends Jennifer and Jason's, but we'll probably just ride out the storm. I don't really wanna be driving in that. Hopefully no vehicles come up. So I cannot scoot over. I guess they can get over. That's what I had to do when I was on the other side. Awesome, we made it down. It was an amazing stay at the park. Three days was the perfect amount of time to just relax and also explore. Our last day, we didn't do much. We just kind of hung around base camp and just chilled. So that was nice. But anyways, I want to get the truck hooked up before the storm comes in and get to where we're going. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with us. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe and onward bound. Uh, Kellogg, you are in the wrong vehicle. You better go, go, go to your vehicle. Come on. <laughs> Silly. Oh, go down there. Don't hurt yourself. Come on. Down here. Come on. Good boy. Okay. Out. <laughs> Silly monster. We were just north of Knoxville, so we got to come back down into Knoxville and then cut back over to 40, and that'll be our destination. Don't forget, if you want to check out more videos, they'll be right over here. Or if you want to subscribe or check out Patreon, it'll be right over there. See you next time. Bye for now.